Hello everyone. Today we are going to be solving AQA GCAC Chemistry Higher Tier Paper 1. Guys, in this video we are solving June 2019 and this is the part 1 video where we are solving from question number 1 to question number 3. This question is about the periodic table. In the 19th century, some scientists tried to classify the elements by arranging them in order of their atomic weights. Figure 1 shows the periodic table by Mendeleev produced in 1869. His periodic table was more widely accepted than previous versions. Okay, guys, we can see that uh, elements are arranged in groups. We can say elements are arranged in periods. The atomic weight of tellurium is 128 and the iodine is 127. Why did Mendeleev reverse the order of these two elements? Guys, the reason why Mendeleev reversed the order of these two elements is because iodine has similar properties to that of fluorine, chlorine, bromine, whereas tellurium had similar properties that was close to selenium, sulfur, or oxygen. So that's why he reversed the order. Mendeleev left spaces marked with an asterisk. He left these spaces because he thought missing elements belong there. Why did Mendeleev periodic table become more widely accepted than previous versions? So Mendeleev had predicted properties of missing elements. When the elements were discovered, they filled that spaces and as a result, those properties of these elements matched the prediction of the Mendeleev and that's why it was you know placed in that particular place. Mendeleev arranged the elements in order of the atomic weight. What is the modern name for atomic weight? So basically atomic weight, when we talk about atomic weight, we are basically talking about the relative atomic mass. In the modern periodic table, the elements are arranged in order of, in order of the proton number or their atomic number. Chlorine, iodine, astatine are in group 7 of the modern periodic table. Astatine is below iodine in group 7. The formula of an astatine molecule, the state of astatine at room temperature. The formula of astatine molecule, so you see the formula will be AT2 similar to that of uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine. Alright, and when it comes to the state at room temperature, if we notice iodine, iodine is solid at room temperature, so thereby astatine is below iodine, thereby it should be solid at room temperature. Sodium is in group 1 of the modern periodic table. Describe what you would see when sodium reacts with chlorine. So basically, when sodium reacts with chlorine, first of all, sodium burns with a yellow flame. So definitely we are going to see a flame, alright, and it's going to produce sodium chloride, which is white solid. So we will see white solid being formed. This question is about acids and alkalis. Which ion do all acid produced in aqueous solution? So guys, acid means H plus ion. Thereby, this one will be the correct answer. Calcium hydroxide solution reacts with an acid to produce calcium chloride. We, uh, we need to complete the word equation for this reaction. 
guys whenever we're making the uh, salt chloride we have to have hydrochloric acid so we will write here hydrochloric acid and calcium chloride and water will be produced a student investigates the volume of sodium hydroxide solution that reacts with 25 cm cube dilute sulfuric acid figure 2 shows the apparatus the student uses we can see the apparatus that is used is a burette here to put the sodium hydroxide and the conical flask is holding dilute sulfuric acid which is 25 cm cube name apparatus a so guys apparatus a is a burette what is the reading on apparatus a to read apparatus a we will have to read from the top side down so 27.1 27.2 5 and then 6 so this reading will be 27.6 we have to read the lower meniscus the higher the concentration of a sample of dilute sulfuric acid the greater the volume of sodium hydroxide needed to neutralize the acid the student tested two samples of dilute sulfuric acid p and q describe how the student could use titration to find which sample p or q is more concentrated okay guys this is a very good question in a question like this we would have to have a method of how we are going to find out all right uh, that uh, which acid is more uh, concentrated so first of all we'll measure the volume of the acid so let's say in this case we're measuring the volume of the acid to be 25 cm cube and then we're going to add an indicator to the acid we're going to add sodium hydroxide solution into the burette all right we're going to add the sodium hydroxide solution from the burette into the uh, acid until the color changes in every experiment we are going to use same volume of sodium hydroxide same concentration of sodium hydroxide solution and then what we are going to do is we are going to record the volume of sodium hydroxide solution all right and repeat the procedure with the other acid solution that we have okay then we are going to compare the two volumes of sodium hydroxide solution to find which sample p or q is more concentrated all right some points that extra points that we can include throughout the process is that when measuring the volume of acid we can use a pipette to measure the volume of acid which is fixed 25 cm cube and we can you know uh, like you know we can uh, do some swirling all right for the indicator to mix okay and we can say that you know a uh, few drops of indicator is used we can also say that this experiment was performed on top of a white tile so that we can easily see all right uh, the color change and finally what we can also say is we can repeat and take a average guys I'm gonna give you a answer that you can write to get six marks all the time. This question is about the materials and their properties. Figure 3 shows a carbon nanotube. So we can see the carbon nanotube here. The structure and the bonding in carbon nanotube are similar to graphene. Carbon nanotubes are used in electronics because they conduct electricity. Explain why carbon nanotubes conduct electricity. So guys, the question we are going to answer in this way. Carbon nanotubes contains delocalized electrons. So the electrons can move through the structure and carry charge.
Figure 4 shows a badminton racket. We can see the frame. The table 1 shows some properties of materials. The materials could be used to make badminton rackets are given below. We can use aluminium with a with certain density and then carbon nanotube. We can use wood. All right, guys, we can see that the carbon nanotube relative strength is very high and relative stiffness is also very high. Okay, and density is relatively low. However, the lowest density is given by wood. All right, but relative strength is very low and stiffness is also very low. Evaluate the use of materials to make badminton racket frames. When it comes to in terms of density, guys, we are gonna say, all right, wood is the least dense. All right, so it is the lightest to use. Aluminium is the most dense. All right, so it will make the racket too heavy. Carbon nanotube is the strongest, so least likely to break. Because you can see the relative strength is very high for carbon nanotube in this case and the stiffness is very high as well so aluminium and wood are too weak so that the racket will break more easily carbon nanotube is the stiffest so least likely so the guys i'm giving you a particular answer you can write this answer most of the time all right uh, and it will always cover up all of your points and you will get a, uh, the best score Zinc oxide can be produced as nanoparticles and as fine particles. A nanoparticle of zinc oxide is a cube of side 82 nanometer. Figure 5 represents a nanoparticle of zinc. We can see 82 nanometer. Calculate the surface area of a nanoparticle of zinc oxide. Guys, in a question like this, if we need to find out the surface area, we need to know that there are six faces, all right, of a particular cube and each face will have 82 nanometer times 82 nanometer to find out its surface area for one side. So we're going to multiply that and our answer is going to be 6 times 6, 7, 2, 4 and then once we multiply that one our answer is going to be 40344 nm squared. So since they want the answer in standard form guys so we're going to convert it 4.0 into 10 to the power of 4. Some sunscreen, some sun creams contain zinc oxide as nanoparticle or as fine particles. Suggest one reason why it costs less to use nanoparticle rather than fine particles in sun creams. Guys, if we use nanoparticles, it can spread over a large surface area. All right, so we need less for the same effect. Guys, we are done with question number three and thank you for watching this video guys this is a part one video and i will be uploading the part two and part three accordingly 
guys uh, subscribe to the channel if you find this particular channel useful and the information useful and you will keep keep getting notification of the videos all right that I'm uploading guys I'm trying to upload as many pos as many videos as possible to help you and you try to solve this particular question paper with me all right and let your friends know about the channel all right a channel like this exist let them know and you know uh, uh, let this channel grow guys guys uh, thank you so much see you in the next video